If you wanna be a successful small business owner, you're gonna fail a lot. Here's how to develop what's called the athlete's mindset to thrive in the midst of it. Hey, I'm Sarah Petty, photographer and founder of one of the most profitable photography studios in the United States. And it's my passion to help photographers see how to build a business that thrives so they can put their family first. I don't want you to have to pick. I know it's frustrating when you start a business and things aren't working smoothly and they're not going the way you want. I wanna give you some tips to really help you have the right mindset in your business so you can handle anything. You can be psychologically bulletproof, cool? Okay, I'm gonna get a pen and paper because this is some good stuff right here. Number one, better the ball. I played volleyball in college and if you know anything about volleyball, you know that your first person passes the ball, the second person sets the ball, and then the hitter goes in and spikes the ball. Well, I was the hitter. I was the one who would get to spike the ball, which was the funnest thing. And the job of the setter was so hard. They had to chase all around. If people were making bad passes, it was their job to get to that ball. And I remember one day we were doing a drill and it was really, really hard, and the passes were terrible. And the setter was all over the place, just getting really annoyed with the passers at the terrible passes that they were giving her, because her job is to set. And our coach, instead of yelling at the passers, which he probably did that too, he came over to the setter and he said, look, your job is to not judge what's coming at you, right? Because there was a ball that she decided it was too far away. She didn't even go for it and he was mad. And he said, your job is not to judge the ball coming at you. It's to do whatever you can to get to that ball and make it better for the next person. So bettering the ball was a term that we used all the time. There's always gonna be something coming at you. And in business, the same thing. You think, oh, all these clients are gonna come to me ready and they're gonna be perfect and we're gonna go through the process and it's gonna be beautiful. And it doesn't usually happen that way. You might have to go out there and scrape and scrimp and you might have somebody coming at you with the whole digital file argument of why they should have all of them. And you have to be prepared to dive on the ground or to do what you have to do to make the play to better the ball for the next step. It's not always gonna be just perfect and that's what I love about sports. So if you can learn how to handle no matter what comes at you, you will be psychologically bulletproof because all you're gonna do is make that ball better. Doesn't matter what comes at you because you can handle it. I know you can. Number two, do something else. So I had the most adorable calculus teacher in college. His name was Dr. Kaplinger and he was Southern and he had a Southern accent and he talked really fast. I can't even impersonate him, but I will attempt because it was so precious. Back then Nike had just come out with the just do it tagline and we were all saying that just do it. And he would work a problem out on the board and he would say, what are you gonna do? You're gonna DI. You're gonna just do it. And he would talk really fast and he would say, if that doesn't work, what are you gonna do? You DSE, do something else. You just do something else. <laughs> and I remember laughing because I'm thinking, well, this is math. It's supposed to work the first time, right? But no, if DI doesn't work, you go to DSE. And I see so many photographers doing the same thing, trying the same thing, guessing at this, guessing at this. Maybe do something else. Maybe find a proven system or a mentor who knows what they're doing, who's doing it successfully to learn from. Because maybe guessing doesn't work. Maybe your DSE is to work with someone who's actually making it work. Think about that. Number three, give yourself time to grieve over the mistakes and then move forward. This is what I love about sports because when you're playing a sport, even if there's only four people in the stands watching, there are people watching you fail and fail and fail and fail. And it can be painful. If you're playing in a big game, you got fans yelling at you when you make a mistake, calling you an idiot or a loser sometimes or booing or laughing. And you're having to take that public humiliation in front of everyone. That's why I want to do this episode because I want you to see that business is a lot like sports. You got to get thick skin. And what I feel like is, look, if people in the stands are going to be negative Nellies, like they're not even on the floor sweating, doing hard things, 
putting their life, <laughs> kind of life, on the line, if you do that in a sporting event or in business, but you kind of do. You put your heart and your soul into it, and you're giving your everything, and sometimes things don't go well. And if the peanut gallery in the crowd who's sitting there eating their popcorn and their jujubes, if they're going to be mean to you, like, who cares? I read a really good book by a sports psychologist at Duke University. His name is Dr. Greg Dale. Go Google him. He has lots of resources out there if you're interested. But one of the things he tells athletes, and he works a lot with runners. I had a daughter who is a really good runner. He tells them about the three second rule. Okay, when you make a mistake in the game, you have three seconds to mourn the mistake and then you need to let it go. And I remember this in volleyball because what we would do, whether it's good or bad, when we would serve an ace, we would go right back to that same person. So if I'm serving, the ball flies over the net and the girl shanks the ball, what's she doing? She's going, oh dude, everybody's watching you, everybody's mad at you, how could you do that? So while she's spending 30 seconds in her head replaying it and beating herself up, I'm serving right back at her. I'm running back to the line. I'm serving at her, serving at her, serving at her, right? And in reverse, when I would get aced, so someone served at me and I shanked the ball, I tried to do the same thing. I hadn't read that book yet, but I knew, Sarah, ugh, that stunk. Okay, next one's coming. Bring it, bring it. Come on, you've got this perfect pass. Those were the things I was saying to myself because I knew if I was dwelling on what had just happened, I wasn't gonna make the next pass. And they always come back to you. If you play in college, you know that next ball's coming back to you because the coach is calling the zones and she's telling them to serve right back at me again. Same thing in life. If you're focusing on the mistake you just made, it's gonna just carry over into the next thing you do. When I work with my students and I give them a marketing activity, sometimes they get so many leads that they're on the phone back to back to back. So what happens if the first person they talk to says, well, I don't want digital files, that's stupid. Stupid. That's kind of like a shank. You give them love, you say, hey, thanks, I understand. You explain it if you want to, and you tell them to have an amazing day, and you move on. Give yourself three seconds to be like, oh, that wasn't very fun, but you know what? They just have a different philosophy, and we're never gonna be a right fit for each other, and that's okay, move on. Be psychologically bulletproof. Don't let that ruin your day. Keep going, you can do this. The thing is, if you don't, you're gonna be stuck in a rut, you're gonna get paralysis by analysis and be too afraid to do anything. Look, if you don't have a community, a safe place to land when you fail, when you fall, when you misstep, I'm gonna put in the resources our free Facebook group. Please come and join us. We are there to lift you up no matter what you do. We're gonna cheer for you. Number four, set goals and work toward them. I know you've heard this one before, but listen, I'm not talking about like, I wanna start my photography business in the next two years. I'm talking about revenue goals. I know it's scary, it's so scary, hang with me. If you have a revenue goal of making five grand a month or 10 grand a month, write that number down because that's quantifiable, that's trackable. You can ask yourself, did I meet my goal or not? But if your goal is squishy, like I wanna get my business moving forward, Forward, you could go on Facebook and read two posts and say, oh, I moved it forward today. Don't get stuck in learning mode. Set a financial goal and work toward it. It's gonna help you. And number five, this is so hard for all of us, practice self-compassion. I get it, we beat ourselves up about everything. I did this wrong, I did that wrong. Look, if people aren't out there on the court with you, don't let their words affect you, right? Stay in the game. Coaches always say that. Block everything else out, stay in the game. And for you to stay in the game, you gotta be okay with yourself messing up here and there, saying the wrong thing, screwing up an order and having to make it better. Look, every time you do that and you make it better, you get better. We always say, a little philosophy we live by, there's no such thing as a portrait emergency. <laughs> okay, so no one's gonna die. It's not like your heart surgeon about to operate on someone. We're photographers. We can fix just about everything. Wedding photographers have another person photographing with you. Definitely not talking to you guys because you can't really go back and do the wedding. So you wedding photographers, make sure your systems are in place, but still no one's dying, okay? Keep that into perspective and just keep serving hard. Realize that in business, you are going to fail a thousand times, but your success depends on your ability to keep going, to move through those obstacles. So keep moving. And look, if you want help with any of this, I would love to talk.
reach out. 